Hello. In this video, we'll be doing some follow-up test prep for Chapter 5, Lesson 2, um, which is how to determine whether a number is a factor of a given number. There are three ways that we learned how to do that in the first video for Chapter 5, Lesson 2. You can draw a model, and if you have an array, a rectangular array, then you know a number is divisible by that number of rows, or by the number of columns. You can also use long division. If you can divide a number by another number, then that number is a factor of that number. And we'll show an example of that. I know that was kind of wordy. And finally, you can use division rules, uh, or divisibility rules. And as you get better and better at memorizing and utilizing your divisibility rules, this is going to be your go-to strategy um, if you need want to be quick and efficient just to know the answer by looking at a number. Let's try some and see what they look like on as problems. <clears throat> And as I usually do, as we always do when we're reading in class, and uh, we want to make sure we're marking the text. That means we're circling key information. We're showing that we're being an active reader, taking in all the clues the problem is presenting us with. Mariska was decorating her room. She arranged, oh, key word there, she arranged 63 picture tiles. She is arranging picture tiles. That should remind you of what? of the squares of the cubes that we were drawing in our arrays. She's arranging them on a wall in the shape of a rectangle. So you've got these clues right here. They are basically telling you she made an array. She made an array with those picture tiles. Here's the question. How many rows of tiles could be on the wall? Now the first thing I'd want to do since this is a multiple choice question one way you can solve this is by drawing a model. Let's think about it. Do I want to draw a model with 63 picture tiles? Drawing 63 squares is going to take me a good amount of time. So I'm going to choose a strategy other than, um, other than um, drawing an array. So I could try long division. Now if I try long division, I have to do 63 divided by 2 and 63 divided by 5, and 63 divided by 6, and 63 divided by 9 to figure out which one doesn't have a remainder. So the first strategy I'm going to use is divisibility rules. Use divisibility rules first. The number is 63. Let's write it over here. 63. All right, let's try this option. 2. Is this number divisible by 2? Well, for a number to be divisible by 2, you look in the ones digit, to tell if it's even. And this number is 63. It is odd. It is not an even number. So it is not be divisible by 2. So you cannot divide 63 by 2 evenly. So 2 is not your number of tiles. How about the divisibility rule for 5? Think of what that, what that is. A number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is a 0 or a 5. Well, we have a 3. This is not a multiple of 5. And this number, 63, is not divisible by 5. Let's cross that off. Let's try 6. What's the divisibility rule for 6? Well, if you think carefully, the rule is if the number is even and it's divisible by 3. But we already know that this number is not even, so it couldn't possibly follow the rule for divisibility by 6. It's not an even number to begin with. So I know it's not 6. Just by process of elimination, I can figure out the answer is 9. But let's go ahead and prove it as well. Um, if 63 is divisible by 9, that means I can divide 63 by 9. And that's going to give me a quotient with no remainder. Think of your 9s. Yeah, 63 is 9 times 7. So 63 is divisible by 9, but it's not divisible by any of these other numbers. So Mariska can make um, 9 rows of tiles to be on her wall. None of the other numbers, um, 63 cannot be divided by any of the other numbers evenly. Let's try another example. Remember, try divisibility rules first. Jorge gives an equal number of marbles to six friends. Now this is a key here. Equal number. He's giving an equal number. He's sharing. 
He's dividing. That is a clue for division. And he's giving marbles to friends. And the number of friends is important. He's giving with six friends. Now notice it says, he gives an equal number of marbles to six friends. We don't know what the number is that he gave, but we know how many friends he shared with. Here's the question. Which could be, which could be the total number of marbles he gave to his friends? The total number. In other words, how much he started with. Could he have started with 15 marbles and given an equal number to six friends? Could he have started with 33? Could he have started with 56 before he started sharing? Could he have started with 60? In other words, it's kind of backwards from the last problem. Which of these numbers is divisible by six? If I'm going to share marbles with six friends, let's draw six friends down here. We'll just kind of do it, do it quickly. I got six friends. Just give me, a, bear with me one moment. Why oh, I've got these friends here, and then we'll use our divisibility rules. And if you figured it out already, um, you can just humor me by watching the, watching me draw these silly stick people here. Um, there we go. Six friends. Now he's giving marbles. They want their marbles. They want their marbles. So they're each going to get marbles. But how many did he did he start with? That total number. If he's going to give with six friends, that means when he shares equally, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another six would be twelve. This number is going to have to be a multiple of six. Now. If I use divisibility rules, I can figure out which number is divisible by 6. First of all, the number has to be even. Is 15 even? No. Can't be divisible by 6. How about 33? Is it even? No. It ends with a 3. That's an odd number. That is not divisible by 6. 56. Hmm, 56 is even. Well, the divisibility rule for 6 is the number is even and... It's divisible by 3. You get that by adding the digits together. 5 plus 6 equals 11. Is 11 divisible by 3? No. So although 56 is even, it's not divisible by 3. So it's not divisible by 6. I'll cross that off. Bringing us to our answer, which is 60. He could have started with 60. And if you know your times tables, you know that if he shared with six friends and he started with 60 marbles, each friend got 10 marbles because 60 divided by 6 equals 60 marbles divided by six friends equals 10 marbles each. 60 is the only number here that is divisible by 6. Let's try another. I'll help you mark the text on the next few and you can try them on your own. Ah, this one's really important to read carefully. Lee and four friends want to play marbles. Lee has 40 marbles to share among them. Okay, Lee is the one that has the marbles. All players must have the same number of marbles to start the game. The same number. That is a fancy way of saying they are dividing and sharing equally. Everyone has to have the same number to start this game. Here's our question. How many marbles should each player get? Now, if someone's rushing through this question and not thinking carefully, they might say, oh, 40 marbles divided by four friends, and there I can do it. But careful. Look at the first, question, first sentence. Lee and four friends want to play. Lee is not just giving these marbles away so his friends can play with them. Lee wants to play too. Lee and four friends is a hidden number. That is really five friends. Even though you see the digit four, you have to remember that Lee is a person as well who wants to play. So it's 40 marbles divided by five friends. So you need to see which... Uh, which number is divisible by 5 in this case? Or excuse me, if we divide 40 by 5, what would we get? So it kind of turns into a division problem. 40 divided by 5. Now if you think about, if you know your times tables, you know 40 divided by 5 equals a number. 
you know a number times 5 equals 40, and it's the same number. What's the missing factor? Well, it's not 5, because 5 times 5 is only 25. How about 8? Well, it is 8. 40 divided by 5 is 8. Each friend is going to get 8. If each friend got 10, they would need 50 marbles. And if each friend got 20, that would be 100 marbles. So Lee and his friends are each going to get 8 marbles. Remember to pay close attention to where it says Lee and four friends. That's actually five people. All right, I'm going to look at the next problem and give this. Here's another example. This is a problem where they have statements. You have to read the statement, and he's looking for the true statement. So you try them, use your divisibility rules, give it a try. Go ahead and pause the video now if you'd like to solve that one. We're going to go to another problem that you can solve. Janice spent $54 to buy some pairs of pants. Notice this, some pairs. We don't know how many pairs. Each pair of pants cost the same whole dollar amount. Equal prices, equal sharing of this money that was spent. How many pairs of pants could she have bought? Okay, if she spent $54 on pairs of pants and they each cost the same amount, how many pairs of pants could she have bought? We need to know, is 54 divisible by 3? Is it divisible by 4? Is it divisible by 5? Is it divisible by 7? Try your divisibility rules or maybe try some long division and see which one of these numbers can 54 be divided by. And our last problem that I'll have you try, um, this is a problem where you need to figure out the factors of the number, read it carefully. If you use your factors, use your divisibility rules, you should be able to figure this one out. Try the divisibility rule for two. Try it for three. Try it for five. Go on and on and see which, um, which numbers 24 can be divided by. You might also be able to solve this problem using finding factors. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try it. Have fun. If you need help um, or a reminder on how to do the problems with long division or divisibility rules or arrays, remember to view the previous lesson or always bring your questions to class. All right, have fun.